April 2024 will be the biggest and most important month this year, guys. Look at this. Everything is merged together here. All the planets are very close together. Uh, lots of new beginnings. Solar eclipse of the century is happening there. <laughs> Powerful solar eclipse, which means new beginning solar eclipse, which means there is earthquake in your soul at certain level because there are earthquakes as well on Earth. And this earthquake changes and gives you a new initiative, new direction in life, new identity areas. These are my longest horoscopes this year. I'm not going to do such long horoscopes, but this is such an important month. A new beginning, another new beginning. Saturn conjunct Mars, new cycle starts, which means you're going to have for the next two years, new tasks. The great work that you have to do, where you have to build perseverance, where you have to put a lot of your efforts, where is that going to be? And you might have a master finished work within two years, but big challenges there as well. And the biggest event of the year, Jupiter conjunct Uranus. <laughs> it will never happen again, Jupiter to conjunct Uranus in Taurus in your life. It will repeat in 84 years once in a lifetime opportunity. I can't tell you how excited I am. New cycle. Well, will your source of abundance and opportunities come to you over the next 14 years? If you catch this message, if you understand it, you can have an opportunity for the next 14 years to be abundant. So we'll speak about each of the 12 signs. But before I start, I want to tell you that this is my birthday month, April. If I'm still alive after April <laughs> with all the eclipses in the beginnings, I want to make you a gift. All my courses will be 30, 40%, sometimes even more off. I do this only once per year for two weeks. This is the time. All my courses, personal courses, if you want to learn astrology over a thousand hours, they're short courses, long courses, I'll put them. Uh, you can buy them now. I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> uh, and we still have a few places for the retreat with me in Bulgaria at the end of May. Uh, we have three places, I think. So quickly write to me if you're interested. We'll organize everything quickly for you. Uh, this is the most personal retreat I ever do because I'll be looking at all of your horoscopes uh, individually. Well, it's very uh, private and it's very personal. It's a small group only. So thank you so much. Let's start. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, April 2024. Pisces, the month starts on the 8th of April with an eclipse in your second house. It doesn't directly affect your sign, but oftentimes if you're Pisces Sun, you might have some planets in areas. So do check maybe Venus or Mercury, especially around the 19th degree. You will feel it then a lot more intensely. Uh, but having eclipse in the second house, this is a new moon eclipse, which is about new beginnings with the North Node to get something, to create some new karma or new, new developments in your life uh, and to uh, gain something even. The North Node can be about gaining. But of course, because it's an eclipse, it can happen through a crisis or through some kind of a disruption a little bit. But the ultimate goal of this eclipse is to really shift the vibration, your financial vibration for you, your self-worth vibration. Eclipses cause always when there are eclipses, there are a lot more increased seismic activity. The, the same happens on a soul level. There is a seismic activity and earthquakes on the axis of your second and eighth house, which is other people's resources and values in your resources. The previous eclipse in March is here in your eighth house. So the themes about my money, your money, my resources, your resources can be very potent for you this month. But there is a shift there. There is a shift where maybe you uh, cannot be, because the eclipse in the eighth house is about other people's resources, maybe you might have to let go of some source of income that comes to you from another, maybe me be more sacrificing for a partner, while a new venture, a financial opportunity, a new source of financial opportunity to be more financially independent is opening specifically for you. Second house is your own resources and how you rule them. And this is where the new moon eclipse is something new coming there, a new idea, new shifting of possibilities. Of course, again, they can be through some financial kind of breakdown, which goes through a breakthrough, or it can happen in a more smooth way. If you're more aligned 
to divine, to your higher calling, to divine will, if you're more aligned to your inner voice, if you're more in touch with God by living healthily, by following your intuition, usually eclipses don't shake us up so much. Uh, so that's why I always advise people, keep you know your connection with God, your higher self, be a good, decent human being, and then most astrological influences, you breeze through them, but yeah, there is a big shift here emotionally um, on your attitude towards money, on your vibration towards money, which will make you over the next one year because an eclipse takes one year to manifest. It's like an omen. They, they can be pretty fast change of your financial state. I remember when there is eclipses in my second and eighth house from the moon. Then it was from the moon and from the ascendant because they're opposite each other. So you know, both second and eighth house double activated. I lost everything I've possessed then uh, to only to build three times as much more because my income increased three times much more. And uh, so there is maybe one door is closing, but something new is coming that will be way more on a higher vibration and opportunity. And it will activate you into pursuing more financial stability and so on. And creating it yourself because it's areas after all you can also be a big shift in your uh, uh, psychological uh, makeup in regards to how you eat second house is also the food you can start a brand new way of diet and areas days the sign of enthusiasm you just need to keep on that fire going so you can shift how you eat. You can change your face. <laughs> and with eclipses, it can be a quick change somehow, whatever you want. You can change your uh, teeth. You can, there might be some need for teeth or whatever that this eclipse activates work <laughs> there. Uh, because the second house is all this here. What they call it, the money maker. <laughs> and it's about making money in second house. <laughs> Um, so these are some, and you might be, Mercury is retrograde there, you might be revising how you but rebudgeting, there might be some extra expenses that come initially that kickstart you on this journey or some, some revising of how you make money, how you invest them, where you put them, how you eat, revising, ruminating, thinking deep, some clarifying conversations, uh, but of course they might indicate indicate some unexpected expenses for some of you as well just be prepared for this <laughs> eclipse mercury retrograde in second house misplacing some objects second house is valuables possessions you know um and of course don't get yourself sucked in, into because eclipse after all can invite the darker voice forces get sucked in in some get rich quick schemes stay away from those eclipse with rahu rahu's at tricksters <laughs> mercury retrograde tricksters as well just be careful but if you have like more solid plan where areas quality with your own initiative um, and you kind of plan it well mercury retrograde you first prepare plan it you can really become shift your your financial state for a long time for forever <laughs> gain a lot more and again, as I said, food can shift a lot. Um, and if there is some crisis happening health-wise or whatever, examining the food that you're eating, it might have to do with that. Maybe you might have some realization that certain foods are more toxic for you. And if you just eliminate just one type, for some it might be gluten, for some it might be meat, for some it might, you know, might be some weird food like kiwi that they realize is giving the problem. But there might be this new way of looking at those things. And, well, it's also happening in my second house from Placidus, but you might be initiating some new project that becomes a source of wealth for you or something like that, or financial security and so on. Uh, your values can shift. What you like to eat, and it can be like on a deep cellular level shift because eclipses are about changing your skin and it happens fast. Uh, what you like as clothes, your appearance in your face, what you like as makeup, what you like as food, as taste. Or maybe suddenly you don't like the taste of some food, you know. Or what you like as art. <laughs> what, uh, if you're an artist, what is your artist style? What materials you use, what paints? Suddenly you shift them from one type to another type, you know. 
So that's one side of it. Second house is family as well. There might be some big shakeup and change to the family. Some surprise <laughs> news or sometimes it can be a bit of a crisis as well there. But something new is coming for the family. Because second house and fourth house are connected to family. Um, all right. And to the family wealth overall that can and with areas something new there. Usually it's to gain because it's with the North Node Rahu, but it's an eclipse. We can never be fully sure. Now, the next big event is that Saturn and Mars are joining. You're going to feel this in your sign and they will never join again for the next 29 years in your sign. So the pressure is on new Pisces. Pisces, I know Pisces and this is sweet, cute, you know, oh, it's almost like spineless or whatever, like uh, seafood. <laughs> but Pisces now, and Neptune has been in your sign for 14 years, making you even more allowing, more gentle, beautiful qualities, compassionate, psychic, maybe a bit lost. Some of you might have been oh, at some point over the last 14 years, really lost in a fog, really lost in some kind of escapist tendencies or really kind of unclear who you are and what you want. Maybe some losses happen because of this Neptune. Or maybe kind of really retreating in your own world, or a bit more isolationist, or really retreating into some kind of a fog or escaping reality or spirituality from a higher level. Maybe you've been saving the world, the higher vibration of Neptune and or some spiritual work. But now Saturn and Mars, these are very organized planets. These are soldier uh soldier the soldier mars is the general saturn is discipline they come to you and actually it's a very welcome influence it might feel a bit too tough because they're a bit of a brutal and ruthless energy and they they join together on the 10th of april but they've been already in your sign some of you already felt it from a year ago saturn entering your sign but now mars starts a new cycle with saturn which will last for two years so it's telling you now you're going to start something new or new way of being that you develop over the next two years with willpower, Mars, with perseverance, Saturn. You have way more power to say no than other times in your life. Saturn is the power of no. You have way more time to be uh, discriminate, way more power to use discrimination, Saturn, to put boundaries and not let others use you, abuse you, or, or to put yourself in order if you're a mess. Saturn and Mars don't tolerate tardiness, messiness, laziness, and you feel your inner authority or maybe an external force that is pushing you towards get yourself together, you know? Don't mope around. Now it's time to be disciplined. Now it's time to be hard on yourself. Um, sometimes it's good not to a big extent. But in a sense to, uh, and, and it's, you going to use the fire of Mars. Sometimes even getting, you might get angry about why is my body like that? If it's your ascendant, it might be, why is my body like that? Why is my lifestyle like that? And Saturn will give you the perseverance to change it. So never, ever, never have you had so much, such strength. Saturn and Mars are the strongest and toughest planets. So badass Pisces now for two years strength maybe you can saturn and mars is the marathon runner saturn and mars is the iron man saturn and mars is making some feat some achievement that requires your blood tears and willpower and perseverance to go through so almost like the universe is calling you to do your great work now for two years you might be laying some foundations for a new health for a new body for a new first house can be you know, depending if it's your ascendant, it's your body, it's your health, it's your lifestyle, it's your direction in life. Saturn and Mars. Mars is ma master builder. Sorry, Saturn is, Saturn both and Mars are master builders. Mars is the muscle, Saturn is the deliberate, the hard work. So now you're in this role where you can transform over the next two years. Your health, if it's your ascendant, your direction in life, you're building some foundations and you have way more willpower than other times and you're going to have. And you might feel fear, which is Saturn in your house, you know, fear, fear. But Mars is like telling you, feel the fear, but do it anyway. So Mars will give you this. Saturn will be, yeah, I might have fear, but Mars will be, we'll do it anyway. And you can be building the beginning of a new life for you, the great work, because once you've developed Saturn-Mars qualities, which is what, 
they're asking you to do over the next two years. Willpower, Mars, strength, Mars, courage, and determination, perseverance, uh, and the power of self-restraint and self-control. These are the hardest thing to build. You know, these are the hardest. Maybe compassion comes easier for you. <laughs> Maybe you, but this, sometimes those things of Saturn and Mars are the hardest. We only can build them under pressure. So yes, you might be under pressure, but it's a brand new you that's emerging that you're chiseling. You know, there's those, there's those uh, pictures or whatever where the stone, an arm is coming from the stone and it's chiseling itself. You're that arm coming from the stone chiseling yourself with Saturn Mars in Pisces for two years ahead. You're not in a hurry. Don't hurry. You have time, but you have to be consistent and regular Saturn and have the willpower to carry on. So you might be working on some big new project that you start that requires your focus and concentration for a couple of years. You might be working, if it's your son, it might be even to do with your career. Again, willpower and health with your moon, something to do with your personal life, family or relationships that you're building, uh, that you're really putting more boundaries, being more serious about your life, building foundations there. So something new start. But of course, around the 10th or even the whole first 10, 15 days, you can feel more stress on you, more pressure. These are not easy energies. You might be more triggered, but also more motivated to act. And usually Saturn Mars kick us into action because of something frustrating that happens. Something that, mm, you know, because these are not like motivation, inspirational. I suddenly feel the urge to be a better person, to become, have more willpower. Something frustrates you about yourself or about your circumstances. And it's like, enough, I've had enough. Now I'm going to do it. You know. So if you have this, Think of it, wow, thank you, God. Like I needed this fire and this anger, this this kick, so I can activate myself into building up this project or you know, some new beginning. First house is you, some new beginning that you work on uh, over the next couple of years, learning to overcome obstacles, to be persistent, to be hardworking, courageous. Things that are not very Piscean, but everyone needs to build this, and now it's your call. And it, thankfully, it's putting order after the Neptunian fog for years and years. Now, and you find it much easier to control yourself and such kind of to be tough, to be, to create a routine in your life. Definitely, you see now to start a work exercise routine or whatever. Those hard things of Saturn and Mars that you were afraid to do before. Of course, be careful for danger to your body or damages. To be honest, I had Saturn and Mars conjunction in my first house uh two years ago and oh yeah it's yes i remember that <laughs> I definitely built some resilience during that time and willpower uh, and i had to like keep going and going and it's just finishing for me this project and those two let me give you my example what happened saturn mars conjunction in my first house i started working very hard on some project uh, that was just moving so slowly and always like every time I was being told no it's not gonna happen no it's not gonna happen uh, or but I kept pushing and I kept pushing and I'm just closing Saturn Mars two years later now with this new conjunction I'm closing the first Saturn Mars in my first house and we had a breakthrough and we finished it we're just finishing it now so even if Whatever you're doing feels like, oh, so many blockages, jump, jumping hoops, it's stagnant, it's not moving there. Within two years, maybe even earlier, if you're consistent, and you will have the consistency. That's the good thing Saturn and Mars new cycle gives you. And the courage to push on despite of the frustration. You will end it up, and this is one of the biggest things I'm most proud of. So Saturn Mars conjunction, when you complete the call of Saturn Mars by building perseverance, courage, you know, not giving up. You end up doing your great work. So I wish the same for you, Pisces. You're starting your great work now, some of you, many of you. <laughs> and um, I want to see the results in two years. <laughs> and now the third thing that I'm excited to talk about is Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. By the way, you're Jupiter. This is your traditional ruler. And it's going to join with Uranus. It's been very close to Uranus for already in March, in April and in May. But so I would say even some of you from the beginning of the year feeling those effects, 
the peak of this conjunction is on the 20th of April. Uh, and actually we'll be doing a meditation together with Brian uh, Collective. If you want to join us, that might be an amazing experience. Because you're Jupiter. This conjunction is very important for you. Jupiter, you join Uranus, because you're Jupiter, once every 14 years. And it's a new impulse. Uranus is the energy of newness, newness, newness. You see how much newness there is this month? New cycle of Saturn and Mars in your first house to be tougher, stronger, long term. New eclipse, new moon eclipse in areas, the sign of something new with your finances, with your consolidation of resources, self-worth. New renewal, new cycle of Jupiter and Uranus in your third house of communication. But I want to focus not just on the third house, but that you are Jupiter. Uranus is bringing this fresh impulse. Uranus is like awakening. Uranus is like awakening from a sleep. And it comes then... It can shake you up, but it feels like I'm alive. You might start feeling like you're alive again and willing to do difficult things with Saturn and Mars here. And third house is the house of initiatives and uh, courage where they're joining. There can be a new impulse of initiative and courage there. Despite of the fear of Saturn, feel the fear and do it anyway. And Jupiter Uranus joining in your third house of initiative, third house rules entrepreneurials. So for some of you, it can be the start of entrepreneurialship. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. Having your own business. Okay. Self-made wealth is third house. Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions is about some ideas or some opportunities that come to us, which will unfold over the next 14 years. Again, it's not just on the 20th of April, you become entrepreneur and that's it. Where is my money now? Ha! No, it's like this whole year, the first six months while Jupiter and Uranus are together close, and especially around the peak, an idea can come to your third house in your mind. You can download it directly, which will allow you to become self, to have more self-made wealth that you can unfold over the next 14 years, that it keeps giving and giving. I, uh, It keeps giving and giving, so it can be this opportunity for you, I don't know what it is, for some it might be a business, but something that frees you. Jupiter Uranus is to be free, that gives you more freedom in life. But uh, there is this element of freedom powerfully in Uranus, but there is this element of Saturn of self-restraint and you having to discipline yourself to gain that freedom, especially financial freedom because it's in Taurus, the sign of money, especially freedom in the ability to uh, unfold your skills, third house, in a way that it's in a way that gives you freedom to unfold your skills, not to use your skills for someone telling you do this, do that. <laughs> for me, it's like no, I'm using my skills to free myself, third house skills. I'm using my skills to free myself, but I'm using self discipline to do it in the process. You know that they say the biggest discipline, the biggest freedom, Uranus comes from self-control and by self-discipline <laughs> so Saturn's saying here we have to do the self-discipline and you'll get so much freedom over the next 14 years but especially with your skills talents you can learn something and become super passionate to learn some new training some skills some course i don't know something third house is to learn something to be, become enthusiastic about some knowledge some skills some uh, uh, training to do or you can start a business third house is marketing advertising you can become brilliant Jupiter Uranus conjunction is the conjunction of the brilliant mind in the third house Jupiter is divine no Uranus is Jupiter is angelic wisdom knowledge uh, Uranus is divine wisdom and knowledge so what kind of information are you going to download, Pisces? What is it there that you can have some eureka moment and some clarity and like the puzzles fit in your mind or a lightning hits you and you're like, I know now, <laughs> I know what I have to do. I know uh, something, you know something, clarity there. This inspiration comes in the third house. Maybe a person will appear that, was, that Jupiter, Uranus is in a social house, third house might be a mate, a friend, someone online that shakes you up, that inspires you. Uranus to shake up, to change you, to inspire you, 
Jupiter to inspire you, that opens new horizons in front of you. Maybe something shifts in your consciousness, your mind starts working in a different way. Uh, maybe you come across an interest or a hobby, which is also third house, is interest, hobbies, or skill or knowledge that you can you find your voice. Uranus is about your authenticity. Jupiter is your voice to be heard. Maybe it's time now to start something third house, something with media. Maybe it's time to be become a messenger over the next 14 years for important message. Well, I don't know what this message will be about. You know what the message is. And you're the voice. Jupiter and Uranus are giving you a new task, a new mission, inspired mission that you'll follow. To be a voice of something. To be... Um, to reach out people in some way oh like jonah <laughs> you know there is a message there and there is wisdom and fire in that or maybe it's the start of some trip maybe a trip will change your life third house is trip maybe you go to thailand for a couple of weeks a trip on the one month you know <laughs> uh, or maybe you meet someone that gives this new circle of friends new social circle that over the next 14 years can turn into a source of even abundance and opportunities. Maybe some skills that you can learn. Maybe you can learn AI or maybe you can learn about Bitcoin. Third house is to learn, to study. Jupiter, Uranus is altcoins, Bitcoins, new technologies, astrology. Maybe it's time for you to study astrology or complex system knowledge, higher knowledge of some sort. Maybe it's time for you to learn about, I don't know, something especially new, innovative. Uh, Uranus and Jupiter is science, new knowledge. Whatever is the newest trends, it's social media, the third house. Maybe you're the next big star on social media. And maybe you'll be so lucky, Jupiter and Uranus is very lucky, to go right if you're launching a website or anything like that. Third house is website, business, social media, writing a book, messaging of any sort. Do it now. Do it when Mercury returns direct, okay? <laughs> For after the 25th of April, all the other planets will be direct. Uh, and Uranus and Jupiter says, whatever you start will be growing and growing over the years as a source of abundance. S start something. Third house is self-made wealth, media, and so on. Th oh, learning something. Thank you so much.